Welcome to the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services at the University of Connecticut Health Center. This video focuses on the embryo transfer process during in vitro fertilization. At the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services, our sole focus is in providing the highest standard of individualized clinical care to people experiencing infertility in an environment that is caring, sensitive, responsive, and knowledgeable. We understand the emotional and healthcare needs of infertile couples, and we focus on what they want most, a baby. We have expertise in the latest technologies and treatments in infertility. We also offer the compassion and support services that will help couples cope with the special emotional needs in dealing with fertility problems. Our highly trained, compassionate staff will help each step of the way, and we'll start by giving couples the hope, support, and medical care they need to conceive. This video is one small part of an ongoing educational series that we hope will help to educate and inform you about the IVF process. Prior to the actual embryo transfer, a trial transfer or mock transfer is performed in the office. This is typically performed before the cycle is started. A trial transfer takes just a few minutes and is a good way to ensure that the actual embryo transfer goes as smoothly as possible. The trial transfer and embryo transfer are not typically painful. The embryo transfer procedure is performed using an ultrasound that is placed on the abdomen. The upper diagram shows the transfer procedure. The lower photograph is an ultrasound image of the transfer procedure. The large black structure at the top of the screen is the bladder, which is full of urine. It helps to outline the uterus, which can be seen below the bladder. Patients are offered a Valium tablet to take before the embryo transfer to help them relax for the procedure. After the transfer, patients rest in the recovery room, then continue to rest at home for 24 to 48 hours. It's not necessary for patients to stay in bed for this time period at home. Modified bed rest is recommended. Patients are advised to avoid heavy lifting, straining, and strenuous physical activity during this time and should take it easy. Prior to starting your IVF cycle, your uterus will be evaluated to ensure that the lining of the uterus is smooth and free from any irregularities that could prevent an embryo from implanting or cause a miscarriage, such as a polyp or fibroid. Some patients will have had uterine imaging already, such as an x-ray dye test called HSG or a surgery called a hysteroscopy. Your doctor will review your history as well as any prior uterine imaging procedures that you've had in the past. A saline ultrasound called a sonohistogram is often performed in the office prior to IVF to check the inside of the uterus. The diagram on the left side of the screen shows a sketch of the sonohistogram procedure. Saline solution is placed into the uterus through a small tube or catheter. Here we can see two areas inside of the uterus that are not smooth. These likely represent non-cancerous growths in the uterus called polyps or fibroids. These are very common and should be removed in a simple same-day procedure prior to cycling to ensure the best outcome possible. The picture on the right side of the screen shows an ultrasound picture of a sonohistogram. Saline is black on ultrasound and helps outline the inside of the uterine cavity. Here we show a uterus with an abnormality inside. The round, gray-white structure seen inside the uterus could be a polyp or fibroid. The age of a woman is the most important factor in predicting the chances of successful pregnancy after IVF. The younger a woman is, the more likely an embryo is to implant in the uterus and develop into a baby. Therefore, it's recommended that younger women transfer fewer embryos than older women. To increase the chances of pregnancy as women get older, it's recommended that more embryos are transferred. The American Society of Reproductive Medicine has developed guidelines for the number of embryos to transfer based on a woman's age. At the center, we follow these guidelines. Our goal is to optimize pregnancy rates while keeping multiple pregnancy rates as low as possible. Factors other than a woman's age may influence the decision regarding the number of embryos to transfer. For example, the quality of the embryos, the number of previous unsuccessful IVF cycles a couple has undergone, and a couple's feelings regarding selective reduction may all be considered when making a decision regarding the number of embryos to transfer. Your physician will make recommendations regarding the number of embryos to transfer in your IVF cycle based on your age and history. 
In order to achieve a successful pregnancy with IVF, there are some steps that are critical to the process. These are having a good response to the ovulation induction medication, successful fertilization, healthy embryos for transfer, a positive pregnancy test, appropriately increasing levels of pregnancy hormone, and confirmation of pregnancy in the uterus with a fetal heartbeat on ultrasound. At the center, we hope that each and every one of our patients has success, and we do our very best to achieve that goal. The Center for Advanced Reproductive Services is dedicated to advanced infertility treatment through the combined application of high-quality patient care, clinical education, and research. At the center, we strive for excellence in patient satisfaction and clinical outcomes in a responsibly managed environment. Learn more about us at UConnFertility.com or call us at 860-679-4580.